All right, bro, I'm gonna do this interview real quick. All right, for sure. Talk to you soon. My name is Ruth Zilla. I'm the curator of Spark Dispensary. I'm a jokester, I'm a father, I'm a brother, I'm a lover. But more than anything, I'm super proud of what we built here today. The inspiration behind putting together Spark comes from the Renaissance. I wanted to recreate a modern Renaissance within cannabis. I feel that cannabis has the opportunity to be a benefactor for multiple cultures and subcultures within cannabis. One of those being art. If you look back to the time of the Renaissance and you like look up the Medici family, those are the people who controlled the narrative through financing art. So the Michelangelo's, the Donatello's, the Leonardo's, the Raphael's, Having the opportunity to sort of frame the relationship between cannabis and artists is really what I wanted to prove is something that is a viable source of industry. Um, and I think I did that. Shout out me. Um. <laughs> Weed Maps is a dream come true. To work with them has been something I've wanted to do since day one as Rubezilla. It's probably one of the most notable partners throughout cannabis and the industry. But just being able to like have my art associated with them, it's such a national and global brand, uh, will hopefully push me to that as well. For the first time, I think I'm using other artists' art as the medium and paintbrush, if you will, creating uh, an experience that's uh, tangible, something you can walk through. I think I've always wanted to create like a 360 Rubezilla room somewhere. And given the first time to do it, I feel like I just did it with my favorite artists in the way I would want it to look rather than just my art. So being a living art project, I think is what is the most unique thing about being the most creative thing I've ever done. You know, um, obviously doing a, a project this big, dealing with getting everyone paid correctly, never wanting to like step on the artist's integrity, just maintaining a sort of discipline that everyone's vision is aligning the correct way. Never overextending myself or over-promising, but over-delivering has been my challenge in the sense where uh, it's something that you want to push yourself to do. Uh, I didn't want it to fall flat, so that's why we brought in the VR stuff, the AR stuff. This right here is our VR station. What makes it unique is that we were able to monetize parts of the store, such as this, and allow vendors and other brands to come through. This is to really take us on a virtual reality journey um, in advertising and marketing. Pushing the innovation forward to people's super pop-ups. There's no longer just like, oh, my name's Ruben, here's a lanyard and a lighter. But being able to really engage with a customer and bring them your product through a different experience. At the end of the day, I think the biggest challenge of it all is like trying to stay focused and organized. Disclaimer, I don't think you have to do psychedelics to like reach a state of epiphany. I don't think you have to do psychedelics to make great art. I think me personally, it's a byproduct. Um, it's part of my personal healing journey. But psychedelics and art have gone hand in hand since the beginning of time. It's just why you literally have cavemen writing messages to each other. It's just how we develop language. But even now, it's just you have folks who use both as a sacred practice. I think myself being one of them, uh, one thing I don't talk about enough, I think, is how the faces and my art is an intentional sacred practice for me. It's more of a prayer. And my approach to psychedelics is much the same. Having those two things go hand in hand, however that works out for you, you know, you'll see the byproduct of that, however it may be. In church, you had the paintings and the stained glass, and then you had, you know, the old man yelling at y'all about guilt or whatever. <laughs> I'm just joking. You have the message and, and whatnot, but then you also have like the communion in all of that. And where I see, you know, psychedelics as its own form of spiritual practice or religion, same with art, is a lot of people don't realize that like cannabis is a psychedelic. It's a nootropic. It changes the way that you think and the way that you dream and all of that stuff. I think opening the conversation to where cannabis can be a positive gateway to healing and into, you know, self-discovery. I feel like that's the basis of art, right? That's why we all create what we create, whether it's a flower or a face or a bug, or, you know, it's all about self-discovery. If people can walk away with one thing, cannabis is more than just getting high. It is a point of connectivity, a point of connection. It's a colorless, a wordless, a soundless language. Same with cannabis and art. So I would love this place to reflect that.